Hi everybody, welcome to a new series of tutorials on GarageBand from Apple. So I just launched GarageBand and you may find yourself in a view like this one where you can browse different touch instruments as they are called or you might find yourself for example inside a touch instrument like this one or if you have no song created you might find yourself in the file browsers like so where you can click on create a new song or go back to the songs that you had active so let's create a new song okay so let's uh, go through uh, what we have on the screen here you have a selection of a touch instrument in this case it relates to keyboard if i um, move to the left you have something similar for the drums also for amp boxes, which becomes really useful if you want to connect to your external instrument like guitar and bass. You have your audio recorder to record your voice and also external instrument. You have strings if you want to do something orchestral. You have your classical bass as well. Your uh, traditional guitar. Some um, instruments from around the world like Piper, Koto, etc. You can add your drummer which to your composition, very handy. And you can also include Audio Uni extension or Interrupt Audio, which are practically third party instruments. If you're not aware, you have also a selection of a sound library where you can manage your packs, then load additional ones, etc. etc. Now, in terms of the top, here you have tracks. That is where we have selected a moment. We are going to work on uh, with a tra sequence of tracks, but you can also work with live loops, which we'll see at another tutorial in another tutorial. So let's click back on the track. Let's focus for this video on the keyboard. So as you can see, you have different selections. Yes, smart piano, alchemy synth, because inside uh, GarageBand uh, you have a, a version of alchemy synth. You have a sampler here and you can select also more sounds from here, which I'll show you also in the, uh, in a moment as well. So let's click on Smart Piano. And for the perp, let's start with disabling the strip here, the chord strip, okay, and go back to the classical view of the piano. So here underneath you have your play area and you can click on the keys to, to, make, to produce sounds. You can connect your external controllers, of course. And here you have your control area. Okay, so let's start from the top left. You have a new song here, which I show you in a moment ago. You can create a new song. You go back to the file browser. You can click uh, um, on this button to go back to effectively um, the, the instrument uh, selection. This one will take you to the sequencer tracks view and clicking on it, you go back to your instrument and this button here will show you ad additional track settings okay right let's again disable the code strip we'll see that in a moment you have uh, back to the um, beginning rewind for the song play which will also play a metronome if it is active and here you see the volume of the track you can also record here uh, see additional settings um, and also have some help as well. Underneath here you see bars for your song with it bits and you have a play ahead which moves as you're playing the song. At the far right you have a plus sign here is where you can add additional sections or duplicate them etc. In the middle here we have a setting for velocity up and down and again if you click on grand piano you go back to the sound library for keyboard where you can select additional sounds. What, appear, uh, what appears here depends very much on the uh, instrument that you have selected. Underneath uh, here you have your play area so keys you can go up an octave down an octave or if you double click on the um, uh, zero or in the, in the middle you will actually zero the preferences or you go back to the normal octave selection here you have sustain pedal to hold your note so you can uh, move it to the right and the notes will be sustained here you have the selection of um, uh, if to scroll the keyboard like so, or go back to glissando, which enables you to play notes in the legato mode. Here you have selection of um, 
uh, your uh, uh, scale. So for example, let's select the minor pentatonic, like so. And it will show you all the um, minor pentatonics related keys for that scale. Let's go back to uh, the top and select only uh, the uh, to disable the scale so we see all the keys. And next we have the selection of the keyboard. You can have two keyboards, one on top of each other, like so. Okay. Let's click again. Wow. To go back to the uh, previous configuration. Here you can set the size of the keys. Um, play yourself and see how, how they will work. You can set the velocity here to make it, sorry, the velocity um, on the key. So if you move up, depending on the vertical position, you play different velocity. And here you have key controls. If you disable the key control, um, this part here of the selection between glissando and scroll will disappear. Next, we have the arpeggiator. So you can turn it on like so. You can select the note order, up, down, up and down, random and as played. So let's choose, uh, for example, random. Then, of course, you can uh, select the note rate, 1 16th, etc. You um, choose the one you prefer, a lot of selection here. And then we have the octave range. So if we play uh, one octave, two octave, three octaves, etc. So let's play these three octave random. Or oh, let's go back to a random and let's say we select up and down. Okay, let's disable the arpeggiator. Let's click our side now. Next, we have a chord strip, which is very interesting. So click on it to enable it. And here you have your chord selections. So depending on where you type um, on your strip, you have different sounds. So for example, at the bottom, uh, let's start from a C, you have a C, a G, and another C, an octave above. Then here we have a C major chord, then the same but inverted, and further inversion up, okay? And you can play play different chords or play or play with two fingers. So you, you play the bass and also the chord itself. You can of course sustain if you want to. Okay, you can also have um, arpeggiator running if you like. So this is an interesting part, which is the autoplay. So let's set it to. Uh, one to activate it and uh, it goes between different variation between one to four uh, being less complex to more complex and um, the keyboard changes the strip changes if you click on the top you play a chord here with also the bass note okay and it's very useful because you can activate also individually like that and if you click again you disable it so for example you can have a C chord play with an F, with an F bass, like so. Of course, you can change the uh, complexity. Oops. Let's, for example, try number three. And the highest complexity, number four. Okay, let's disable the uh, strip, the chord strip. Let's go back to the initial uh, view. Now let's choose a different instrument. Let's click on grand piano and let's go to a classic row, uh, rock organ. As you can see, the panels have changed. What you see is a rotary speak here, which you can change the speed here from slow 
too fast and it is increasing. Here you can add different harmonics with your draw bars. You can add percussion effect, chorus and also distortion as you like. Okay, let's choose a different instrument again. For example, a and a, a whirling an electric piano. Again, the configuration changes and now you have a, a pitch wheel. Still at your velocity. Okay, the controls here are more or less the same, but you have additional controls here for your decay, tremolo, drive and chorus. Again, let's change the instruments again. Let's go to a clavinet. And again, you can see the controls are again different. So here on the right hand side, you see an auto, a phaser, a drive, and also a dumper. So let's activate sustain. Okay, let's change the instrument again and now let's show you under Alchemy Synth, let's choose an arpeggiated one, which means that the arpeggiator ear will go off. And let's choose Bell Echo Arp. And let's click close. So this is an Alchemy Synth. In addition to the pitch wheel, you have a modulation wheel. You still have your velocity wheel. We all, but here you have a very interesting thing. So let's play some notes and move from a different configuration. And what you can do is move to the right like so, the screen, you see additional controls here. And pay attention what happens when I move these with the cursor uh, between dif the different configuration. So as you can see, it allows you to change very quickly configuration like delay, high cut, the ARP octave, and the type of ARP, the soft cut, and the os oscillator smooth. Um, also, you have your low cut alongside your high cut and also your reverb LFO. If you click and hold the move to the right again, you have also additional uh, pads here which is very interesting. You can need to read at the bottom what you're acting on. So cross fade, okay, in this case, and here ARP velocity and ARP mode. And on the right hand side, you have your typical ADSR control for attack, decay, sustain and release. As you notice, there is a third mode here um, uh, for Alchemy Synth. So you, you have Glissando Scroll, which we have seen, and also we have Pitch, which, is your t which correspond to your portamento settings. I also notice that there is a gyroscope uh, symbol here. So if you click on it, then you can um, you can move your iPad and as you move your iPad, it will actually uh, move, for example, your selection here. Okay. Right. I'm going to stop here for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll continue in the next videos. And as always, see you next time. Bye.